So it's brew day, uh, we're going to be brewing the Forest Fire Smoke Spruce Porter. Uh, this is Ricky from the Ale House, Ooh. he's the assistant manager there. Yes. Uh, he does all of the grunt work basically. <laughs> uh, that is the sound of our, our boiler coming up to temperature. Uh, right over there. So we're just going to mash in now. So this is the Golden Promise going in. This is where I drop it everywhere. Don't do that. So we've got crystal wheat and Munich and some other stuff in there. Crystal wheat is actually something we decided to add in at a later date just because we didn't have anything on the middle of the EBC ratings. It was a lot of fives. Um, one thousand. And then one thousand for the chocolate and the carafa. In go the dark grains. So we've got our chocolate and our carafa. Smell that. Oh, it does smell good, doesn't it? Sorry, internet. Smell o vision doesn't exist yet. <laughs> the purpose of the mash is to extract all of the sugar from the grains that we're using. Um, there isn't going to be much sugar inside the dark grains, they're mostly there for colour. And we've got our malted flake oats in the go. And our smoked milk. This is probably going to smell amazing. I can't wait. That does smell great. It does. Wow. My little cheapo probe. Does the job though. Although it doesn't really take the temperature in real time, annoyingly. It just... Oh, it just updates every so often. Yeah. So in an ideal world, we're looking for a mash temperature of 66. Uh, that's going to be the optimum temperature for the enzymes to get to work and start... Thank you very much. For the enzymes to start to get to work, uh, converting some of the starches into shorter chain sugars that will be acceptable for fermentation. As you see, it's a little bit too cold at the moment, so I'm just going to boil a kettle and hopefully top it up with some boiling water and get that back up to the match temperature we need. And so moments later, I dropped the temperature probe housing into the wort. <laughs> RIP temperature probe. So that's two brews now and two thermometers dead. Um, from now on, we're just going to have to do everything by sight and feel. Like cavemen. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. <laughs> so this is the magical tome. It's got every brew that we've ever yeah, done. I mean, what's interesting about this book now is that when you, especially because it starts in like 2013, you can just see how, you know, how little we knew. Oh, look at that! That is shit! Oh. No G of that, that means it would have only come out like 2%. Alright, so that's the mash finished. This part of the process is just called the... Cheers. It wasn't my fault. It's just called the fallout. So, we'll take uh, some of the wort out and pour it back over the top of the mash. So you can see there's a bunch of solids in there and we want that to run clear before we start uh, draining out. And there we go. Pretty much free of solid. So the runoff begins. Sparge technique. So the idea is to just rinse out all of that lovely sugary goodness. Right, so we swapped the boiler and our receiving bucket around. So we're now just going to fill up from the receiving bucket into the boiler and get that on the boil as soon as we can. Anything to add, Ricky? How's uh, the brew day going so far for you? Better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> This is our hop and spruce. It's doubling as a spruce bag. Oops. 
what this will do, it will allow us to put hops and the spruce into the wort without anything clogging up the outlet at the bottom, which I can tell you is a pain in the ass to unclog. For the hops, I've decided to use Magnum, which is a German variety of hop. Uh, these are hop pellets, actually, so you can see that they're not leaves. Um, T90 hop pellets are essentially hops blitzed up and pressed into these little pellet shapes. And there you go. First wort hops, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. Oh, no. The first casualty. So with these spruce tips here, <laughs> there is seem there seems to be some sort of debate as to whether to put them in at the beginning of the boil, which the two homebrew books I spoke about in episode one suggest. But then I think this website sprang up around the time that I was originally researching this, and it's called spruceontap.com. <laughs> and yeah, they're basically guys in Colorado who are surrounded by spruce uh, forests and things like that. And they've set up a business of picking spruce tips and and selling them onto homebrewers. Now, can you think of any reason why we should put this in late or or at the beginning or what do you think? Well, it hasn't really got oil. Well, it has got oils in it, hasn't it? Yeah, I think it does. Have, it probably shares a lot of the resins that the hops do. But they say if you put it in really early, then it boils away all the flavour, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. I was thinking that it probably does behave like a hop in that respect. So I think putting it in 15 minutes towards the end, which is what Spruce on Tap uh, suggests, it can't hurt. It can only increase... The pine aroma. Exactly, I think so. So I'm separating it into two batches. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do, but I, may, I think maybe I'm going to dry hop one of them and not dry hop the other, or dry hop one and dry hop with a different hop in the other one. Always good to split your batches because then you have the opportunity to learn something. And here is my ingenious work chilling solution. So I have a copper coil sat inside there. So if you put your finger there, Ricky, actually, if I move this around, you should feel that... Yeah, let me get a warm up. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it works as a heat exchanger. It draws the heat away from the liquid and cools it down nice and quickly. So the yeast is actually a, a fairly interesting one we're going to use uh, today. So this is the London Ale yeast from White Labs. And it's the first time I've ever seen a packet like this. Apparently the yeast was grown and cultured inside the packet and has never been exposed to the outside. And normally with liquid yeast you make a yeast starter, but it says specifically unless you... Uh, making a particularly strong beer or the yeast is old, which it's not, um, it should be fine for you know up to 20 litres. So since this is a 10, 10 litre split, I'll put it in half and half and hopefully we'll, we'll go from there. Right, here we go. It's still a bit warm, but it's not as warm. So we're looking at an original gravity of roughly 1056. Not too bad. It smells better than the pepper I was eating earlier. <laughs> <laughs> so tasting the wort before it's fermented isn't as useful as tasting the malt because there's going to be a lot of sweet flavours in there that will disappear through the air. It's very sweet. So. Yeah, well, it's going to be mostly maltos and... Can you get any of the smoke? Yeah, it's right at the end. Try it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Only time will tell. So, till next time.